Chapter 01 Helen's Story One morning, a young lady with gray hair, visited me and Holmes. Please sit down and tell us your story, said Holmes kindly. I'm Helen Stoner. I'm living with my stepfather, who is from older Saxon families in England. His name is Roy Lott. He is a hot-tempered person. He has practiced medicine in India. He married my mother when he was in India. At the time of my mother's remarriage, my twin sister Julia and I were only two years old. Meanwhile, we shifted to England. Shortly my mother died when we were in England. So the stepfather became the owner of my mother's wealth. However, if we married, he would have to pay us £250 annually. Our stepfather took us to his old house Stoke Maron, which was his ancestral house. After that a significant change came over him. He wanted to be isolated. He seldom came out. He became more and more violent. Once he was in prison due to a murder case. Many disgraceful things happened with this change. I think you can imagine Holmes. Both of us had a terrible time with him. We had no happiness in our lives. Julia died when she was 30. Although she was in 30 her hair was almost white like mine. Your sister is dead? asked Holmes. Yes, she died two years ago. That terrible incident forced me to speak to you. We had an auntie named Miss Honoria Westphal who was my mother's maiden sister. We were only allowed to visit her rarely. And also my sister Julia's wedding was fixed on those days. She died within a fortnight for her fixed wedding. Please tell me everything in detail, Holmes said. Miss Stoner began her grievance solemnly. Our house is a very old one. The bedrooms are on the ground floor. Dr. Roylott owns the first one. The middle one is my sister Julia's and the last one is mine. They all open to the same corridor. All the windows of the rooms open to the lawn. In the night, Dr. Roylott had gone to his room early. My sister Julia came into my room because she smelled Dr. Roylott's strong cigar smell. We were chatting until late. Helen, have you heard someone whistling at midnight? Julia asked. No, Julia replied. Are you sure that you are not whistling while sleeping? Yes, why? I have heard someone whistling since few nights. But, I can't find where is it come from. Maybe from the next room or the lawn. No worries. She smiled at me and left my room. After a few minutes, I heard that she locked the door. Do you usually lock the door? Asked Holmes. Yes. We don't have any security there. So both of us are used to lock our doors. I couldn't sleep in that night. A feeling of misfortune impressed me. Suddenly, I heard someone screaming. It was my sister's voice. I jumped out of the bed and ran towards my sister's room. I heard the whistle which my sister told me. It was a smooth sound. Julia was appearing with a face full of terror like a drunkard. She was shivering. At once, she fell to the ground. Oh, my God that was the speckled band, said she, and pointed out her finger towards the doctor's room. I shouted for help, then our stepfather came out of the room with his black gown. At that time my sister was unconscious. Even though he provided village medical treatments, we couldn't survive Julia. Wait, said Holmes. Are you sure about that whistle? Did you hear that? I heard that very well. I'm sure. What do you think that this lady died of? I believe that it was because of shock and fear. But I couldn't realize that what made her frightened. That happened two years ago. I was lonely without my sister, but last month one of my friends proposed to me. My stepfather agreed to our marriage. So the wedding has been fixed. But the day before yesterday I had to move to my sister's old bedroom because my room is repairing. Yesterday I heard that whistle again. Immediately I ran out of the village to ask for your help. Please help me, Mr. Holmes. I don't want to die like Julia. I'm scared. You have made the best decision to meet us. This is a serious matter. 
If we appear in Stoke Moran today, is it possible to investigate those rooms? Asked Holmes. Yeah, definitely you can. Because my stepfather is away from home the whole day today and there's no one to disturb you at all. Excellent, then we'll be there early in the afternoon. Said Holmes. Thank you very much Holmes. I was burning until I find a helper. Hope to see you in the afternoon. We were able to catch the Leatherhead train. We hired a trap to the house. The day was perfect with a few clouds and bright sun. Finally, we reached the place, Stoke Moran. Hello Miss Stoner, you see we are on time. I was waiting impatiently for you. Dr. Roy Lott went out. He'll be back soon. Yes, we don't have much time to waste. So please take us for the rooms. Said Holmes. The house was made of stones and was gray in color. The right side block was modern, while the central part was in a state of repair. The windows were blocked and broken. Chapter 02 Visit the House Is this the room in which you used to sleep? The corner one? Asked Holmes. Yes, but now I'm in the middle one. By the way, is there anything to repair in this room? I don't think that this needs to be repaired. There's nothing wrong. I believe that it is a plan to move me to the other room. Holmes went into the room and carefully examined it. The windows were bolted. Watson, are you aware what has happened? Whispered Holmes. No idea Holmes, I said. You see, said Holmes to me, our dangerous friend Roy Lott needs the girl's money because he only has 750 pounds a year from his dead wife. But the whistle. The band and the gypsies, they are more difficult to understand, but I think I have an answer. After that, we went to Julia's room which Helen has been moved to. Holmes examined it deeply. It was a small room with a fireplace and a low ceiling. A bed was in one corner and a drawer was in another. The left side was a dressing table. With what that bell beside the bed communicates with? It seems newer than the other things. Asked Holmes. Yes it was placed a couple of years ago. It connects with the housekeeper's room. Did your sister request for it? Oh no. We used to do everything by ourselves. It means it is useless. Then Holmes gave the bell rope a brisk tug. See, it's a dummy. It doesn't ring, even not attached to a wire. It's awesome. It has clamped to a little hook above the ventilator. There are two three points in this room. Why is a ventilator open to another room? At the same time a useless spell rope? Ventilators which are not ventilating and dummy bells. Said Holmes. Shall we move into the other room? Asked Holmes. Doctor's room was larger than the others. There was a small shelf full of books and a small bed. What is this box? Ah, that's my stepfather's business letters, said Helen. Have you seen it? Asked Holmes. Yes, I saw it a few years ago. It was filled with papers. Isn't there a cat instead? Look this, there's a small saucer of milk. I don't think so. We only have a cheetah and a baboon here. A saucer of milk is not enough for a cheetah. This is a point. There must be something else. Next, Holmes's eyes caught a dog lash which was at the corner in the room. Watson, what is that? Asked Holmes, it's a common lash. But why it is tied? Helen you have to follow my advice. It is essential because this is a deep business. We both must spend the night in Julia's room. You must return to your room the pretense of a headache. We'll stay in the village crown inn until Dr. Roy Lott goes to sleep. After he settled in his room you have to inform us through a light of the lamp and open your windows as well. Then we will be able to investigate the whistle which you and your sister Julia heard," said Holmes. Okay, Mr. Holmes. However, I know you have already found the reason for my sister's death. Tell me Mr. Holmes what's the reason? cried Helen. I must have clear proofs before I speak. Hurry up if Dr. Roy Lott returned our journey would be in vain. Goodbye Miss Helen," said Holmes. We were on the upper floor of the Crown Inn and we saw the avenue through our window. Dr. Roy Lott entered to the avenue. Do you know Watson? 
This night will be dangerous. Did you see the ventilator? Can you remember that Helen said Julia could smell Dr. Roy Lott's cigar? Guess it is because of the ventilator. And also there are some coincidences. A useless bell rope. A ventilator. Julia's death. The bed which had clamped to the floor. And also the bed was always in the same position of the rope and the ventilator. Said Holmes. Chapter 03. Death in the night. At about 11 o'clock. We received our signal to enter from the middle window. We entered the middle room with a bit of difficulty. The whole room was dark. Both of us were waiting with straining ears for hours in the silence to see whatever befall. Suddenly we saw a light through the direction of the ventilator. And heard a very gentle sound from Dr. Roy Lott's room. As soon as Holmes heard the whistle, he pulled the bell rope. Then we heard someone screaming. It was like a hoarse yell with pain and fear. It became louder. What is that sound Holmes? I asked. Now it is all over. Take your pistol and we'll enter to Dr. Roy Lott's room, said Holmes. Dr. Roy Lott was sat on the chair beside the door with his grey dressing. His eyes were staring at the ceiling. Around his brow. He had a yellow color band with brown speckles. Speckles. The band. The speckled band whispered Holmes. This Indian snake has bitten him and he has died. We must put this creature to his den, said Holmes. At first, Watson. I assume that it was the gypsies. But then I found out, something has gone through the ventilator. Or along the bell rope onto the bed. Then there was the milk to the snake as they drink milk. The doctor could easily find Indian animals. As he was a doctor, he knew that this snake's poison is difficult to find in a corpse. So every night he had put the snake through the vent. It went down the rope onto the bed. Nobody have seen the snake, so he whistled every night to call it back. The sound of falling metals was the door of the metal box, which was the house of the snake. Maybe the snake went through the vent several times before it killed Julia. Unfortunately, it killed her that night. And Helen also was in danger because of the snake, said Holmes. But today, when I hid the snake on the rope, it was angry and went back through the ventilator. That's why it killed the doctor. I'm not sorry about that. Soon after Helen Stoner's marriage she tried to forget the terrible deaths of her sister and stepfather. But she never really forgot the speckled band.